thank you, Alzheimer Europe, for inviting me on behalf of the uh, Interdem group. I will I have the pleasure to be the chair of the Interdem group, and the Interdem group is a group dedicated to psychosocial interventions in dementia. It's a network for, uh, of uh, several uh, disciplines, uh, clinicians, psychologists, well, all sorts of clinicians and social workers, and we try to do multidisciplinary research. And we have more than 170 members. And what we try to do is to invest in the future by having uh, into them academy in which we try to train and educate young researchers. And I'm happy to talk about the knowledge we gathered on stigma. And stigma causes an individual to be perceived as by others as a person with an undesirable uh, reacted stereotype rather than being an accepted normal person. So you are nothing else than, for instance, your illness. And stigma attached to dementia reduces a person with dementia to a person who is unable to maintain social relationships and, uh, and activities. And I will give you an example of made by Kate Irvin, an Interdem member, and I hope it's going to work. Parties. Uh, well, I didn't want to see people treating me differently. My family thought it might be best not to stress me with the grandkids too much. Visits became rarer and rarer. I used to be chatty and outgoing, and my wife misses that. But you know, it doesn't have to be that way. What if people could talk to me and feel it's okay even if I do make mistakes? And if my grandkids could see me, well, as an old book, worn around the edges but still full of adventure. What if people know I have dementia and see me facing it full on? I can change their sympathy to support. The first step may seem difficult, but the support is out there. See a bit more about this. Have a look at DementiaElevator.ie. This really is about involvement of persons with dementia. Person with dementia can change the life situation itself by being active and, well, just continuing living. And the sad thing of stigma is that it really adds hardship to, uh, to the, life of the life of persons with dementia. And the hardest thing is that it ignores the capacities of the persons with dementia. And this is really a big threat to, uh, to personal life and especially to the feelings of dignity. And these Alzheimer Europe conferences already show for many years uh, that it's possible to have a good life with dementia and that people with dementia can really contribute uh, tremendously even to these very big uh, conferences and taking uh, very ambitious tasks on board. Well, dignity is really a key feature in dementia care and loss of dignity causes suffering but dignity can also be restored, and that is the good, the good news. But how to do it? Well, if you, uh, there are many concepts of dignity, but my preferred one is the importance of, uh, of not being considered as a burden to others and to, to continue to be useful. And for the researchers, you can even measure it. So it's, it's, you can use it as an intervention as trying to improve life, but you can also measure it. And how to influence dignity? Well, to start with, 
you acknowledge the capacities of the person with uh, dementia and especially their capacity to give something back and to contribute. And then being a citizen is crucial. And being and giving, having the capacity to give something back, this is what people really want in all circumstances, even when they have cancer in the last stage of the disease and when, they, uh, when you suffer from dementia. In all these circumstances, it's really moving that when you listen to them, what people really want is to contribute and to give things uh, back. And my, my mother, she suffered from dementia, and even the last day she was giving us things back in showing how much she loved us. So that is what you always can do, and this is the most precious thing in life. But if you give too much care and you take, you take things off people from dementia, then you challenge the principle of giving things back of reciprocity and that might threaten self-esteem. <clears throat> and it's important to look at what we call autonomy, that you can do what you want, what you think is very important. And, but it's, it's not as simple as that. Some people really want to live their own life autonomously and they are very clear about their need and preferences and they also very much know what they can't do and what they can't do. And then there are other people who think, uh, well, I, I am dependent and I very much like that people take care and that's okay. And, but in both cases, it's, it's fine. People know whether they want or not to be autonomous and that gives a, a good balance between having the direction and being dependent. And, and that contributes to their happiness. But when you don't know whether you want to be helped, when you don't know when you can't ask for help, when you get to less help, when you get more help than you desire, then it's it has a negative influence on your happiness and um, quality of life. And one of these things is that you don't know where you are. You don't, you overestimate or underestimate your uh, capacities. And it's even more complicated because even in one day you can change. In the morning you can want, you want to do everything yourself because you feel good and in the afternoon you don't want to do that. And so you, as a carer, you have to be very keen on where, where a per person is. And so in order to, uh, to restore dignity and autonomy, it's, you should not only help people to do as much self as possible, <laughs> but to look what people really want to do and, uh, and, and to do things for them if they don't want to do it themselves and especially to acknowledge their capacities and the restrictions. And well, reading through the material we got here, I found a very good example of it um, from Henry Ranking. I don't want someone to do for me what I can do myself. I, ca I can't better express it as in here. So preserving dignity starts with not offending people and that's what we often do. And so if, if you stop doing that, then we already gain a world. So what you can do is support the people with dementia with the same respect you want for yourself. And I found this recommendation in the blog of Kate Irvin. Uh, I met her in Australia. She has a blog and she suffers from dementia uh, already 10 years. You can see her, her um, internet address on the bottom. And uh, you know, she's a very good blog writer. And these dignity statements have been promoted by the Southern Australian uh, government. So there are initiatives to promote dignity 
on a large scale, and this is really a, a very welcome and new development. And what is also very important in daily care and in care in nursing homes or in home care is that promoting and addressing dignity doesn't cost time, it doesn't cost money, it's just you can do it very quickly, but it's kind of attitude and it really makes a difference. So we, don't, we have very little, uh, um, well, we, we, we don't have medicine, uh, we do have interventions, but this is very easy to apply. So what I recommend is that you allow people to reci reciprocate, so to give something back, to uh, have autonomy as much or as less as they want, and that might stimulate dignity. And um, we are very happy that dignity is now on the agenda. Interdem did some pioneer work, and also the joint program Neurodegenerative Diseases took it on board. And there is the Australian campaign, and I'm very happy with the theme of this conference. And what is, what is a good thing is that we managed to get it on the research agenda, meaning that researchers, if they want to be granted, they have to consider dignity. And um, we already, and there are already several projects uh, running which address dignity. Uh, with regard to already existing interventions it's re that consist uh, dignity, I want to refer to occupational therapy, especially uh, because they really try to find the needs and address the needs of persons with dementia. Shared decision making, there is even dignity therapy and there is self-management support. I'm not going into detail about these interventions, but if you are interested, you can find everything on the internet. What is important is the role of dignity in destigmatization. So if you address dignity, it's a real powerful means to improve the quality of life of persons with dementia. And what I want to emphasize is if you look at what people with dementia can do themselves and look at the traje trajectory people with dementia are going, then there are a lot of possibilities for a kind of self-management, um, uh, especially regarding the perception of dementia. So the, you, it, the way you look at yourself and we heard from Helga and other persons, you, you, have, to, you have to have a, a very hard struggle, but then you can get enormous gains and gains, and that's important because, well, this is what, we, what all of us are doing, and dementia is even a greater chance. And when I started as a researcher, uh, I was uh, in my early 30s, and then as researchers, we, we also discussed that, well, when we get dementia, how are we going to fight? And then we decided, well, we start now. We start to, to live our lives as good as possible and to deal with the chances we meet. And when I listen to the story of Helga, this is exactly what she is doing and what many of you are doing. And then you can even uh, have a very much growth and you can be very proud if you can deal with this extreme, extreme challenge. It, uh, it's, that's a task a person has to do in self, but you can be helped by others. And uh, well, uh, the, especially the narrow relations, the close relations, they are very important in dealing with dignity and they can be very, very helpful. Um, well, coming back to my mother, we uh, treated my, uh, our mother as our mother and that was very good because she continued to treat us as her children and it's, it's very nice to stay a child with, with a loving mother your whole life, at, at, at least as long as she lived. And then there is the societal self, and I uh, really want to give uh, credits to Alzheimer Europe 
and the National Alzheimer Organization for putting this on the agenda uh, because it's, it's no longer a shame to have a family member with dementia and it's becoming more and more normal and people are come to, come to reality, meaning that you see a person as dementia as a person with a, a specific challenge, but just one of one like we are, and maybe many of us will deal with these challenges in the future ourselves, so you, we can better be prepared. So looking at this, this also gives new avenues. It's not about caring, it's not about a special support, but it's about personal development, personal development in persons with dementia. And well, if you want to give proper care, you can stimulate this or you can help in this development. And self-compassion, I, I like it, it entails treating your, yourself with kindness and recognizing a kind of shared humanity so we are, we are all together and being mindful when considering negative aspects of oneself. So this is a society striving for success and being better and better, uh, but being better and better, that might be in your heart and that, that is the real and the only way of being better. So, and the good thing is that self-compassion was related with happiness, optimism, and positive effect. And it was a user, uh, you, you can go for self-esteem on the one hand, but also for self-compassion, well, on the same hand. And this is really the time to do it. Uh, for instance, in the Netherlands, they emphasize the participation society, stimulating independence of everyone and social cohesion. And I really hope that taking care for other persons will be valued, um, will be more valued than we do now, because now we have to go to our job, we have to be there, and if you are not there taking care for another one, well, that's, that's not the way people like to, to work. And so if it's more important, then there is more room for caring for each other. And um, our university, our university hospital, uh, has the motto of the patient as a partner, and well, it, it's, it's, it's just the beginning, but it's practiced here um, already. Thank you for your attention.